when all the Amorite kings across the Jordan to the west and all the Canaanite kings near the sea heard how the Lord had dried up the water of the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, they lost heart and their courage failed because of the Israelites. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the Israelite men again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelite men at Gibeah Haratha. This is the reason Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of the war, had died in the wilderness along the way after they had come out of Egypt. Skipping down to verse 7. He raised up their sons in their place. It was these Joshua circumcised. They were still uncircumcised since they had not been circumcised along the way. After the entire nation had been circumcised, they stayed where they were in the camp until they recovered. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the seed of the word which finds fertile soil. We do declare our hearts to be fertile. We do choose to receive. And all those who receive said, I receive. I receive. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. As we're on the cusp of a new year, uh, a lot of people will be leaving this year. And really, the only thing that's significant will be that the calendar will change. And they'll make some resolutions that they won't keep. Oh, okay. <laughs> for, for, for those of you who go to the gym on a regular basis, look out because tomorrow is going, you know, this week is going to be totally jammed because everybody's going to be signing up. They're going to give away memberships. They say, just give us $5. You can be a member of our gym because they know you'll never come. And so we have all of these things that we do that signify on an annual basis sort of the shallowness of our society. Changing the calendar doesn't make you better. Changing the calendar won't make you uh, more committed. It won't make you more disciplined. Changing the calendar won't do anything other than it may encourage you to do a little bit better than you did last year. Mm -hmm. So today's sermon is entitled, Leaving This Year to Possess the Land. All right, amen. amen. We're leaving 2023 to possess the land. Now, there, there are some imagery. I hope you can go there with me. I, I've only done it a couple of times, but have you ever put on one of those VR headsets? Mm -hmm. And when you're in that thing, if you leave it on long enough, everything in there is very real. Uh, it becomes really real. And there is some imagery that I may mention to you later in the scriptures where the Lord gave us a clue about what it looks like to nature when we the people of God go and possess the land and in that scripture it talks about them going out with joy and being led forth with peace and the scripture says that the mountains and the hills are going to be clapping their hands and the trees of the field are going to be waving all these things are going on because and we see it in the New Testament the earth the natural earth the dirt the trees the birds all of creation is in a state right now where they're groaning for the people of God to take their place. And so even though everybody looking at the same things you are looking at in this new year, everyone will be looking and seeing the same things you see. But if you are willing to accept the spiritual revelation from the Holy Spirit that he'll give you, you'll see something different. It'll look like opposition to them, but to you, It'll, it'll be like the trees of the field are clapping their hands. They're excited. Wherever you're trying to take over, whatever areas you're trying to now go in and, and possess for the kingdom of God, you won't see and emphasize the resistance and the opposition, but you'll see the opportunity and the fact that God has promised something to you. I don't want to get too far away ahead of myself and too far away from where we are. Just a few objectives for today. I want to make sure if you don't get anything else, make sure you leave 2023 and you seek the kingdom. 
make sure you consecrate yourself, really your heart, and make sure you stay in the camp. So seek the kingdom, that's an S. Consecrate your heart, that's a C. And then stay in the camp, that's an S and a C. That ought to help you to remember. So you got an S, which is what? Seek the kingdom. Okay, Matthew 633, you have a C, which is what? Consecrate your heart. Okay, and then what's your S and your C? Stay in the camp. Okay, now when we talk about consecrating our hearts, Sister Vonda just read a scripture in Joshua chapter 5, and I'm going to direct your attention to verse 2. Uh, this is, this always kind of catches my attention, uh, probably based on my gender. It says, at the time, the Lord said to Joshua, make for yourselves flint knives. So he got a stone, graded, 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 sharpened it to become a knife. And then it says he took the knives and he circumcised again the sons of Israel. He didn't get a scalpel. I wonder how much precision there was. I mean, they, some of the scholars say there weren't really two and a half million people who left Egypt. It was probably more like 22,000. I don't know what the number is, but I'm guessing after you circumcise five or six people, you're probably are trying to be looking at the line. You're just trying to get through. So I don't, I don't know where, where, where you stand in the line, but you know by the time it gets to you, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. And so here's Joshua having to circumcise all of the men because it says that all of the people who had been previously circumcised had died. Mm -hmm. God has said, you, your hearts are not right. You didn't listen to me. And so you're not going to enter. So just a brief history lesson. We have Egypt in bondage and slavery for 400 years. 400 years. Mistreated, abused. God had promised hundreds of years earlier, I'm going to deliver you. And so he does bring someone along, and that's Moses. So when you get to Exodus, I think around chapter 14, you'll see that Moses has now finally gotten Pharaoh to let them go. And then Pharaoh's sitting up thinking, they walked out, and they said they walked out boldly. I did not, never noticed that before. If you look at the scripture, Egypt was a hard place, but when the Israelites left, when they left, they left boldly. But in just a matter of time, once Pharaoh's heart was hardened, he sent all of the horses, all of the chariots. He sent everybody. He said, go get them. Because remember, they walked out with a lot of wealth, too. Mm -hmm. it, the, Lord, the Lord's instruction was, go to your neighbors, the Egyptians, and borrow some stuff from them. Now, they were borrowing and never expected to give it back. <laughs> we talked a little bit about that last week. But yeah, they borrowed it. They never expected to give it back. They took it. So they got the wealth of Egypt, and now they're out in the wilderness. And so Pharaoh sends his army after them. And they find themselves when Pharaoh catches up with them, they can't go to the right, hills and mountains. They can't go to the left. All they have is the sea, and they have Pharaoh closing in on. So they looked up to Moses and they said, Moses, we told you before we left, we'd have been better off staying in Egypt rather than dying out here in the wilderness. Now, you know, it's amazing how God sends somebody in your life to help you get out of something. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you face a little bit of opposition, you now turn to them and say, you know, see, I should have never followed you. <laughs> but that's what they did. It's amazing how they, I'm just like, that is astonishing that they would have the audacity. And if you look at verse 12, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, just for your reference. So then Moses said, hey, y'all watch out and see the strength of the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord. Don't worry about it. And then Moses went and cried to the Lord. Yeah, Lord, what you going to do? What you going to do? They get closer. They get closer. And the Lord says, why are you crying out to me? Verse 16, Exodus 14, 16, he says, as you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, tell the people to go ahead and proceed across it. So Moses, the man of God, is crying to God. And God says, why are you crying to me? We've been talking about the seed time, harvest time thing for the last few weeks. And I don't care what prayer you're praying to the Lord. After you cast your cares over on him with thanksgiving, it's just a matter of time before he's going to tell you what your part of it is to do. You're going to have to do something 
you're going to have to have a seed in this thing because that's the way the earth works. So Moses is told, quit crying to me, basically. Stretch out your hand. You do something. This is your part. And so here they are going across. And y'all know the story. Y'all seen the movie. When, when, when they got across, Moses released his hand and all the water came in and it annihilated the whole army. Well, in our today, today's scripture, we have Joshua, who's now 40 years later. So that means it's like 470 years since God promised Abraham that they would have the promised land. They're 470 years. As a matter of fact, they left on the anniversary of God telling Abraham that on the 430th anniversary. So to the day, that's when they left Egypt. And if somebody had been a biblical scholar and they had the resource, I bet they've been looking and saying, you know what, you know what tomorrow is? It's the, it's the anniversary. It's the anniversary. It's the anniversary. So here we are now, 470 years from the anniversary. Joshua has now taken over the leadership because Moses has died. He couldn't go into the promised land either. So there's the land that God promised. Now there were areas he told them where they were going to go. So for some people, he might have said, for you, it's going to be easy. You just go over there and you just take it. But he might have looked over and he said, for Brother Anthony and his tribe, y'all going to have to fight. Because the people still there and this giant still there and they're not going to give it up. They love it. It's a lot of food. The, the produce is great. Y'all going to have to fight. Might look over Brother James and say, okay, y'all, y'all go over there. It's just a little bit, a few people left over, but it's not going to be too bad. Then he gets over here and he says, Sister Alicia, y'all going to fight. So he promised them something that they were going to have to fight for. Everybody couldn't just walk into the promise, but God promised it. But you have to realize that God promising it doesn't equal it's in your lap. Okay. That's right, man. God promised something doesn't mean that it's an automatic everybody going to lay down and let you have it. Come on now. Mm. God promising you something doesn't mean that it's going to be a piece of cake just because the word of the Lord went forth. Woo. All right. Now the scripture says that his word goes forth and it will accomplish what he yes. has sent it out to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But this is how faith works. Mm. Come on now. When his truth in heaven becomes your truth in the earth and you then declare it, that's when it's yours. Yes. So he can promise all these things. He does all throughout the scripture. There are all these promises and there are people who never realize them. There are people who say this stuff doesn't work. It's not real. God is not real. His word did fail. It failed me. But me just repeating his words doesn't give it any power. Come on now. All right. Come on. Me believing his words, me trusting in his word, me counting on his word, and then me seeing it is what accomplishes something in the earth. Because remember, he has been given the heavens to rule and govern. But he says, the earth I have given to me. So just because he said it in heaven doesn't mean that it absolutely happens right away for me on earth. It takes a man, female or male, a man, which is a spirit in a hummus body, that's where we get the word human. Man is male, is not gender respective. It takes a man to say something, declare something, and make it in the earth. Same with Mary. We talked, I told you a few weeks ago. God said it. Oh, yeah, you're going to have this baby. It's going to be given to you by the Holy Spirit. You've not known a man, I know, but you're going to have a baby. He's going to be the Savior of the world. He's going to be the Messiah. But it took her to say, okay, be it unto me. She had to say it and accept it and believe it before it was a reality. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of years of prophecy of people saying that couldn't happen until Mary, this teenage girl, says, I receive it, I accept it. So we have Joshua here with this whole group of people. Now, just before, the, they, they, they've gone across the Jordan River. So just like Moses had his deep water experience, with Joshua, the way they did it was they had the Ark of the Covenant and they told the priests, you go stand in the water. And as you stand in the water, the water is going to open up, let the people cross. And then once you guys step out of the river, the water is going to come back in. So they, he said, send them over in battle formation. So they're getting ready to go over and possess the land. You know you got to fight. I think you have to fight a few people. You know you got to fight. Everybody else knows they just need to be in the crowd because that stuff is going to be taken care of. Need to give you a modern day current picture. I told you that just because God said it doesn't mean that it's yours, right? Yes. Until you accept it. Yes. You're true. Colossians 1 said, We have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness. 
Colossians 1, 13 and 14. We have been transferred out of the kingdom of darkness. We have been transferred into the kingdom of his dear son. So you were in one kingdom. Now he says you've been transferred into the other kingdom. We're going into a new year. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of folks who don't even know what the kingdom is. They just think if you become a Christian, you're in the kingdom. You've been transferred. You have been transferred. But you being in it and having been transferred doesn't mean you live in it. That's it doesn't mean that you get the benefits of it. It doesn't mean that you operate in the principles of it. It doesn't mean you get the jelly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just means that you have been transferred in it. Someone could take you out of your car and put you inside the door. But if you don't go and walk in the door, you never realize that there's lemon and banana nut bread <laughs> over there on the counter. You'll never know it. You never know Why? It. Because you stayed at the door. Mm -hmm. So there are people who go to church week in and week out. They're just going to stay at the door. They don't know anything about the kingdom. They're not living in the kingdom. Amen. They're not possessing the land. Come on now. They, they, haven't, they haven't made an attempt to go over and say, I realize there's some things God said for me and I want them and I'm going to get them. Yes. They just go to hear the, the, the nice milk of the word. In the end, God going to win. In the end, you're going to go to heaven. In the end, the bad people going to get it. You know, that's the easy stuff. That's yes. the milk. That's the milk of the word. Where's the meat of the word that Come puts on, a demand on your faith? Come on. Now, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm going to say this. Come on. I don't want nobody to be mad at me. I might need another police escort like last week. <laughs> Malachi 3 and 8. Y'all know that 3, 8 through 10? Mm -hmm. About you tithing and opening windows of heaven and God pouring out a blessing and rebuking it about. It's available for everybody, but it ain't everybody's. Hello. Mm -hmm. That's for me. That's, that's scripture for me. Hello. That's my truth. That's just the Bible is true. That means just the bottom. Me, just the Bible, and just the bottom. The rest of y'all, y'all got to make it your truth. Okay. Knowing that if you tithe, God says, prove me in this thing. If you will tithe, give me back what's mine. That's not you doing anything special. Yes. He says, I will open windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. On top of that, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So the good stuff you have going on, it's not going to all crash. Just because it happens all around. I'm going to be the one who rebukes the devourer for your sake. So that truth has to be what I declare. And that's what the kingdom is. The kingdom is, new definition. The kingdom is every place in the earth where a man, male or female, has said, I possess this and Jesus is Lord. My God. Wherever that is, whether you can see it or not, in your heart, in your mind, in your family, in your relationships, in your finances, in your whatever, if you will get the land and possess it yes. and make him the Lord of it, yes. that's part of his kingdom. That's what it is. Us Amen. taking stuff and saying, Jesus, this is yours. Amen. Tell me what to do with it. Tell me how to, to work with it. My concern is that we as Christians don't move to the level of becoming disciples so we never possess mm -hmm. the kingdom. We never possess the new land. We're standing there with Joshua Amen. and the Lord said, y'all can't go in there. I had you guys circumcised for the last 40 years to, to signify my covenant with you. And there were some people who went through some things that were dead. They knew that God could get angry. They knew that God would provide. They knew that God would be with them. They knew that God would make sure their enemies were defeated. They knew some things, but wait a minute, all of them are dead. So now it's the kids, it's the new generation. They just heard about some stuff. They just heard. They just sing about some stuff that they heard somebody else sing about. Come on now. Okay. They don't know what it is to like surrender. They haven't had any experiences. They just know they're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So they're saying what they're supposed to say. But they're not ready. And they've not been circumcised. Uh -oh. So now we got to bring this home. 
Joshua couldn't go in and possess the land until people got ready. Now, God asked them for a circumcision of the foreskin. And he's asking us for a circumcision of our heart. Yes. You're not ready to go into the new year and possess it. You can let them change the clock and change the calendar. Yes. Well, you're not ready to possess it until you've done something with your heart. I gave you a seat, didn't I? Yep. Okay. So we've been transferred. We've been rescued. We've been translated into this kingdom. But there are three kinds of church people. I'm just talking about church people. You know, I'll pick on the world. I, I just pick on the church people. Three kinds of church people. All right. That we stand in here on the precipice of a new year, a precipice of a new land, a new generation. But some of them don't know. <laughs> that is not a crime. So I'm not picking on you. If you just don't know, you don't know. You, don't know. you have to learn. Mm -hmm. That's why I said that C and the S at the end. There's another group that have forgotten. Another group ready to go into the promised land this new year. They don't even remember that it was just a few years ago when God rescued them when they were lost in sin. It was just a few years ago when they were facing financial ruin. It was just a few years ago when they couldn't even go, when our people who looked like us couldn't go to a public restroom. That part. And they had dogs barking at them. And now elections come up, oh my, I'm picking on you. Elections come up and they say, I don't, I'm not going to vote. All of them crooks. I don't know which one. I'm independent, I'm still trying to decide. And it's clear that there, are, there is a group of people in this country who hate anybody who looks anything like me. And they will use us because we have money. They will accept our money for designer goods. They will accept our money at sporting events and for entertainment. I think they said at some point 60% of all the designer stuff was bought by people who were African American. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yet we're half of us are living below the power. I mean, just those kinds of things where people will say, I will use them for, for my use, but I don't care about them. Mm -hmm. And every time I get a chance, I'm going to get something for me and take it out of the government. I'll make sure they don't get something. I'll make sure their children don't get the, the, the funding they need for Head Start. I'll make sure that they don't get fair voting representation. I want to keep changing the lives when they're not paying attention because they don't go and vote in the mid-years. They just come and show up when the president mm -hmm. comes. Preach. Preach. So there are people who have forgotten where God has brought us from. Mm. And they possess. The land is like a foreign thing to them. They, they want to go and get the land, but they're not declaring it for his lordship. Therefore. Let me move on. Quit picking up too many more enemies. That third group of people... <laughs> There's a third group of people who have an idea, but it's because of their own wisdom and their own brilliance mm. and they're all mm. their success and they're all mm. prosperous mm. and they're all worldly and they're all fleshly. Mm. They're so important that they are blocked from knowing. They don't know what God has done for them because they, their minds can't even remember. They're blocked from knowing. Mm -hmm. Just in this last year, amazing thing. And as somebody trained as an economist, I would love to talk about the details of why I think the economy did as well as it did this year. But it doesn't matter. Every economist in the country, no, wait, wait. Every economist in the world said there was going to be a great recession yes. over this last year. Mm -hmm. People started laying off and cutting back in their com companies because they knew that if everybody's saying it, it had to be the case. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. There was a group of saints. Yes. I don't think they know anything about the GDP, the OPP. <laughs> they didn't know anything. But they touched and agreed. And it just took two or three of them. And all they knew is that I need for my grandma to be taken care of this year. Yes. I need. That's all they asked for. Amen. God, please. And they touched and agreed that there will be enough. And the social security checks were, were more than enough. The gifts that they received were more than enough. Unexpected things happen. And we look at the economy and it's booming. It's buzzing. People made so much money this year who were in, in the stock market. And it's not because they got it right. It's not because they predicted it right. It's because there were two or three touching and agreeing yes. because they didn't want to go on. And the Lord said, I'm not letting you go on. And so I used to hear this scripture, but now I know it. I once was young. And now I'm old, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken. 
It just happened, y'all, right in front of us. It just happened all over the world. There are people who are doing way better than they expected. Because a couple of people touched that agreed. See, I love the group of saints that will, that will know that God is going to prove himself faithful. And so we need that kind of people to go with us into the promised land. We need to give them the equipment, the idea, so that they can go and possess the land because they have the faith. They know that God is going to sustain them. They know that God is going to uphold them. They're going to praise God because they know what he can do. Yes. They don't know how he's going to do it, but they know that he can do it. Yes. And see, it doesn't take a whole lot, James says, to turn a big ship. You just get a little rough. And so you just change your confession just a little bit. You just change how, what you meditate on just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it puts you in position to go and possess the land. Touching and agreeing. Changing what we say. He's, he's here trying to lead these people. None of them have ever, ever really experienced any bloodshed, any pain, no nothing. And he's got to get these people to go fight. They've never had to fight before. He needs them to go fight giants. People who are skilled in battle. There are some places we need to go this year. We're not skilled in those areas. But because of God being with us and because of what we intend to do, we just know we want to possess. We're like the two little ladies who were touching and agreeing. We just know what we want the end to be, Lord. Tell us what to do. We can ready to go. Baby, you got your broomstick? Yeah, I got my I got my hole too. Mm -hmm. And this is all we have. Mm -hmm. We don't even have David's slingshot. We just know we're supposed to go and possess it. Mm -hmm. And I know they sitting there on it now. I know I'm going to have it in the end. Yes. And so it's that attitude and that confidence in God that will help us. Our praise has to be genuine. It can't be forced. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our faith has to be genuine. It can't be just repeating what he's saying. Yes. We need to remove some skin in our lives, remove some things that are weighing us down so that we are circumcised. And it's not with the scalpel. It's going to be rough. So I'm going to go ahead and warn you about that and then we're going to move on. If you got some people in your life and they're always dragging you down, they always got a problem, they always need you to help them with something, they always need your advice. I'm just going to tell you like this and cut them, cut them loose. Thank you. Thank you. That's, yes. a, that's, a, that's a circumstance. And it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be a little nasty. Yeah. It's going to be a little rough because they're not necessarily interested in you letting them go. Mm -hmm. Cut them loose. Mm -hmm. Cut them loose. There are some desires that you have from time to time. They just pop up every once in a while. It's not every day. Not every day. Circumstance. Mm. Cut it loose. If it doesn't help you grow in your relationship with God, I like to snip, snip. <laughs> Cut it loose. Sometimes it's going to be family members. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. Start separating yourself. You don't have to do it right away. Just start separating yourself and then cut them loose. There are going to be some friends in your inner circle who are not pro propelling you to do the things of God. Yes. They're not trying to get you to do more things in God. They're the ones who are telling you it don't take all that. Cut them loose. Mm -hmm. All right, Pastor. Take one. All right. <laughs> Little habits. Mm -hmm. Circumcised. Mm -hmm. Cut them off. See, there are things that you could get away with when you were in Egypt because somebody else was providing everything you needed. They would tell you when to wake up. They would tell you what to do. And this is all you're going to get. Mm -hmm. But when you're out on your own, Come on. Come on. it requires a different discipline. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know how sometimes you go to work and sometimes, I know you just heard about it, when you go to work and you don't really do that much that day? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get away with it? Well, when you're on your own and you do that enough times... Yeah. You don't eat. That's right. That's right. The money doesn't come in. The check doesn't automatically show up on the first and the fifteenth. Sometimes it's the first month and then the fifteenth month. <laughs> Y'all talking about days when you want a regular paycheck, but when you don't know. 
And so what you do has to be consistent. It has to be disciplined because it's designed to get to an end. You don't know how and when. You just know that's the end you're supposed to have. You know you're supposed to be in the kingdom where everything that Jesus has to say about it, everything that he has to say about it is what goes. And so you have to take some land that's going to resist you. You're going to have to take some things, some attitudes in yourself. I'm not talking about with other people. In yourself, in yourself. that will resist what he said. Yes. But his word, if he's the Lord over that area, his word has to be the final word. Whatever he said is what it has to be. Mm -hmm. And the only person enforcing that is you. Yes. The Holy Spirit's job is to show you where to enforce. You have to enforce it. And sometimes it takes days, sometimes it takes years. I was just uh, talking today about something uh, uh, regarding my back, and I had a I had a pre-existing back issue for a year or two before I had that accident. And so while the accident, all the things concerning the accident have been taken care of. Y'all laid hands on me, I got better, I had some, re some uh, recurring pain like three or four weeks later. I worked through that, went to the chiropractor, did all that, but the original issue popped back up after all that happened. It was just on one side of my back. I have been since that time on a daily basis having to do some things and fight through some things when my back hasn't felt like letting me do it. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things is to have coffee. So the coffee maker sits back, you know, on the counter back like that. To pick up the coffee, I used to have to barely put my fingers under it and kind of drag it forward because I couldn't pick up the coffee maker. I was healed from the accident. My spine was great. They did the imaging. No problems, no fractures, no nothing. The muscles and all that stuff, they had all been bruised. They'd all been taken care of. But the original issue popped up, and it was worse than it was before. When I, when I was talking to the kids in uh, one of my daughter's schools, and I did Bible study one time, and I asked them the question, I said, well, Who's responsible for my accident? Getting me healed. And the kids said, you are. Mm -hmm. I said, why would y'all say that? God's the one who's supposed to heal me. And they said, no, but you're supposed to be the king of your area, your domain. Mm -hmm. They got it in 20 minutes. Yes. We are the kings of our domain. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is going to resist you at every turn. So don't expect that it's easy just because God said it. Mm -hmm. okay. They had the whole land, and if they had done what he told them, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be having the issues in, in, that we're having right now in, in the Middle East. Because mm -hmm. he yeah. told them what to do, and they yes. didn't do it. Some of them were like, this is good enough, oh, I'm tired of fighting, I don't want to fight no more. Mm -hmm. Now, he told them what to do, mm -hmm. and how to possess, possess the land, and they didn't do it. So you got to figure out what things you got to cut off. Circumcise. You got to figure out what kind of things and what people you need to just let loose, distance yourself. Because as we go into the new year, I'm going to give you, oh, and I'm sorry, and at the end, you got to stay in the camp. You see that last scripture we had in there? Stay in. See, when you get circumcised, what you don't want to do is try to go about life like nothing ever happened. No, when you, when you submit yourself to God, you start going to Bible study. You start going to church. You start changing things in your life. You start cutting people off. You start cutting things off. You start changing your habits and your desires. That's a, that, that is a disruptive thing. That is supposed to be painful. Mm -hmm. It is going to be painful. Yes. It is going to hurt. Yes. So what do you do while it hurts? You stay in the camp. They didn't go fight right. He just said, circumcise, let's go fight. They couldn't have done anything. They weren't in position to. So you have to stay in the group. Stay close to us. We stay close to each other as we're circumcising our hearts. So that we will be able to, when we finally go, when we finally go to get something, we're in a better shape to do it. We're not still lingering over those issues. We're not lingering over those hurts. We're not lingering over those lost relationships. We're not lingering over those past mistakes. No, all we're talking about is the healing. All we're doing is praising. All we're doing is confessing. We're keeping our faith strong. We're getting stronger, 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 praising God, even though it's painful, even though we don't know how he's going to work it out. We keep praising. We keep believing. 
And then he's the one who makes sure we get what we're supposed to do. So I'm going to give you these last two scriptures and then we're out of here. See, when we enter the new year and we get ready to go possess it, the kingdom of God is our pr promised land. You can't see it. There are no boundaries out there to say, there it is, there it is, right? We have to go and determine it ourselves. We have to determine the boundaries that we're going to claim for the Lord. Yes. We have to have a faith expectation. So make sure you keep your faith involved. And I'm going to read something to you from Isaiah 55. You've heard part of it before. Isaiah 55 and 11. This is God speaking. He says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. And so I'm prophesying that over you. That it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all of the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Joshua 1, he says, every place on which your foot treads, I give to you. No man shall be able to stand before you because I will be with you. Only be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed because the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Whatever you do, do not take things at face value. Consider things from a spiritual perspective. Yes. I know it sounds crazy, but he said, this is what my word will be for those who will receive my word. Mm -hmm. It won't return void if you will receive my word. Mm -hmm. If you'll act on my word, if you'll believe in my word. It will prosper in the thing where until I've sent it. Mm -hmm. So again, as we leave this year, we're not like everybody else. We don't want to be like the world and just say, oh yeah, happy new year. <laughs> Pop the champagne and we do like, happy new year. Bang, blow the horns and all that stuff. For us, it's more than that. Mm -hmm. Amen. For us, it's finding just little areas. It doesn't have to be every day. Find an area every week or once a month and say, this is an area I'm going to claim for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is an area where it's not like I want it to be, and I know God has something better, so I'm going to claim this area. I'm going to circumcise my heart, my attitude, my habits, and I'm going to make sure I stay in the camp because I know the word that God has for me is going to be coming from while the times I'm in the camp. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this opportunity. Thank you for allowing us to live to see this day. Amen.